welcome to the Nacha Healing Show. Keep it Nacha. We are the Nacha Healing Show. Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is Viva Wegemans. Viva Wegemans is the author of a wonderful book called Cortisol, the Master Hormone. And you can find out more about Viva Wegemans and his wonderful work at his website, pardeem.com. Welcome, Viva Wegemans. Thank you for having me. Now, Viva Wegemans... We have had you before on the, here at the Natural Healing Show for UK Health, K Health Radio, and we talked about what is cortisol, which is the master hormone of the body, and the subject of your wonderful book, Cortisol, the Master Hormone. How, so how exactly does stress make us fat? Right. Uh, so the, yeah, that's that's only one chapter in the book, but a very critical one, uh, obviously. Uh, the the short answer to that question is there's an enzyme that has been protecting us for for millions of years, and that enzyme is storing uh, cortisol as cortisone in our adipose visceral tissue. That's the fat tissue around our organs, and that is why cortisol is. That's the short answer. Why cortisol is making us fat. Uh, because that stored fat uh, becomes a, a gland, a cortisol gland that will stress us out when uh, we, uh, uh, we, we are not uh, balanced. So, and we can go a little bit more into detail of how that works in our behavior and, and the chemical processes behind it. All right. So let's start for our audience uh, by talking about just giving us a short explanation of exactly what is cortisol. Sure. Yeah. For, for, I mean, for, for millions of years, it's not just us. It's, it's pretty much all mammals. Uh, what cortisol does is it uh, helps us survive every day. And uh, it's, you know, imagine we were suffering from hunger, violence, infections, and something has to protect us. And that's uh, the, the common denominator is cortisol. It's a hormone that is a, a, signal, a signaling function from the brain uh, to uh, the uh, first the pituitary and then the adrenal that is uh, the adrenals is a little uh, organ on top of the kidneys that is producing cortisol it's pushing it into into the bloodstream and it does a lot of stuff it's uh, you know we think of it as a stress hormone but that's really only three percent of what cortisol does it's regulating our sleep right our circadian rhythm it's regulating our um, like we said, our, our weight, uh, it's regulating. And that's really yin and yang with insulin. And we'll go a little bit uh, deeper into insulin uh, uh, in a bit. Um, and then it's um, uh, blood pressure. Uh, it's, uh, you know, in, uh, we, we just talked about infectious diseases. So it, it uh, helps you attack uh, because it's a steroid. It helps you attack uh, uh, intruders. And uh, when, uh, when, when you're... Uh, you're suffering from famine, uh, you need to uh, store fat. Uh, and that's, that's also what, uh, what cortisol does. Uh, so it, it makes, when you're in need, let's say I am about to do a pole vault and I'm scared, super scared to jump over. Well, I'm, I probably won't even make it over, over three feet of, over a meter. So then, then, um, what happens is you have two, two, um, uh, uh hormones kicking in, uh, adrenaline, epinephrine and and uh, so that's also called epinephrine and and then cortisol cortisol stays longer in the blood Ep epinephrine uh, uh, adrenaline kind of tapers off after after a couple of minutes but cortisol could stay in your blood for hours and um, what has been the the the, uh, the norm that forever cortisol would come down 
uh, unless you had you know uh, hunger for for many uh, days weeks uh, years on end and um, that's not the case anymore so we see a lot of people suffering from uh, structural like chronic uh, elevated cortisol levels and that's that's really what we're talking about here cortisol is super healthy it's it's helped us survive helps still helps us survive every day and be happy but uh, when you have elevated cortisol levels over time it wreaks havoc and that one of the things and that's the one we're zooming in on today is is the the weight uh, weight issues and i would i would argue even um uh, you know overweight um and and all the diseases the metabolic syndrome that goes with it and cardiovascular diseases but on the flip side also uh, let's not forget that uh, all the uh, the uh, eating disorders are are correlated with cortisol. Fabulous information. Now, so for our audience, I want to share some other in additional insights. So years ago, I had the great privilege of studying with the Olympic strength coach Charles Poliquin, and Charles Poliquin, who's now deceased, unfortunately, no longer with us. He coached athletes to, I believe, 13 gold medals in the Olympics. And he derived a system using body fat calipers. So he could take an individual and take calipers. And then based on where you're in your body, you're storing body fat, he could tell you where your which hormones were out of balance in your body. And when you have a cortisol imbalance, you're storing extra fat around your belly button area. So if you're listening to this broadcast, you can just simply put your hand over your belly, uh, over your belly button and feel there. If you're, uh, if you're storing extra fat there, then that is a good sign that you may actually have a cortisol imbalance. Yeah. There's even, even, uh, some in, in, uh, uh, some, uh, uh, circles uh, in the physicians' world, they call it the cortisol uh, pooch. <laughs> and uh, I do, I do want to point out though, there's a, a major difference in the way uh, male and female bodies store fat. Uh, male, by uh, by definition, uh, starts storing fat. They obviously have a, a lower fat percentage to begin with, uh, not in absolute terms uh, usually, but uh, uh, they uh, they do store it in uh, in their in their tummy. Uh, to begin with, uh, women early age start storing more fat around the hip area. That changes when estrogen, uh, partic in particular, and other hormones as well. But uh, when when estrogen drops in perimenopause and menopause and postmenopause, you you see when estrogen is dropping and when cortisol is out of whack, you you see that um, uh, the fat is being stored more and more in the also in the in the tummy uh, rather than the hip area. And that's really hard to get rid of. Um, and and one of the things we'll be discussing is is the interworkings between a cortisol and insulin. Uh, luckily, we've we've you know learned a lot about insulin in the last decade. I would say, as as a general audience, there's been you know a lot a lot was known already in the, in the scientific world, but we've now become much more aware of the dangers of of insulin. I would say. Um, not so much so when it comes to cortisol. A lot of people, you know, they associate it with stress. Some people associate it with, with weight. But to really understand how devastating the, the, the effect of cortisol is, you, you know, you only have to look at the scientific studies. So please, audience, don't take my word for it. Um, to look at the, the studies that we're referencing in our book because it's, it's mind-blowing if, if, uh, if you dig into it. So since we're since you mentioned about where women store body fat and continuing on, and this is short because we want to get back to cortisol and weight loss. So when you're storing extra fat around your iliac crest, which is basically your hip bone, that's a sign of insulin imbalance. And then you mention your thighs and your hips, where a lot of women hold extra fat, that's a sign of estrogen imbalance. And around your tricep area, that's a sign of testosterone imbalance. So if you notice like men have higher testosterone levels, so they tend to have more ripped uh, tricep area, whereas women, you know, even if you work out a lot, may not have ripped triceps. So another wonderful resource on this subject is the work of Dr. Diana Schwartzbein, who's a medical doctor, hormone expert, endocrinologist. 
And she's written a number of wonderful books identifying, identifying different metabolic types based on are you in adrenal burnout and do you have insulin resistance? And based on what your metabolic type is, then she's got different programs to help you restore balance to your hormonal system so that your body weight can go where it needs to go. Which brings me back to my next question for Viva Wegemans, author of Cortisol, the Master Hormone. What is the relationship between our stress hormone cortisol and the sugar handling hormone insulin? Yeah, it's really yin and yang. Um, the, the short is that um, cortisol is pushing glucose into the bloodstream. And uh, that's the short version. It's much more complex than that. But in, so, so glucose is being pushed in by cortisol into the bloodstream. Insulin is trying to push it out to the cells. That's, that's it in, in a nutshell. Um, one more comment on what you mentioned earlier. I think we touched upon it in, in your last show. Uh, but just for the new listeners, uh, adrenal fatigue, uh, or as you called it, adrenal burnout is... Uh, uh, is actually wrong terminology. Uh, it's there's nothing wrong with the adrenals. So even if they produce uh, less uh, cortisol, um, it's not actually a dysfunctioning of the adrenals. It's the brain telling. So it's going from the hypothalamus to the pituitary to the adrenals. It's the brain telling the body, "Look, I've done enough damage. Let's cut the crap and let's uh, uh, let's now produce less." Because um, cortisol, as we know is is one of the most damaging uh hormone well, not just hormones one of the most damaging things happening in our body full stop if it happens for a longer period of time and we are exposed for for weeks and months and, and years on end with elevated cortisol levels and Rivia Wegemans, i really appreciate your clarification on that because there's something called your hpa axis your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis so the hypothalamus which is a major gland in your brain controls the pituitary, another gl gland in your brain, which then controls your adrenals. And as Viva Wakeman points out, a lot of times if you do a cortisol test and you've had many, many years of stress, of prolonged stress, you may be in a low cortisol state where your body's producing less cortisol than usual. And people refer to that as adrenal burnout, but it's really just another way of saying that is just years and years of prolonged stress. Yeah, the proper, ter the proper term is adrenal dysfunction and uh, insufficiency. Sorry, not in, uh, dysfunction, it's insufficiency. And, and, that the, and that's a more severe state when you've gone to elevated levels and there's so much damage and there are certain types of... Uh, symptoms that we see when you go over that threshold and your your brain as we just discussed says no more and starts producing a few amounts of cortisol every day that is when you see uh, symptoms uh, like long COVID, right that's the right now immunology team at the university of yale has discovered the biomarker for that is is uh, low cortisol other ones are uh, you know uh, uh, severe depression, PTSD. And uh, the we have to say that, look, whether we're, we're discussing uh, weight issues, uh, overweight, um, uh, eating disorders, uh, and then resulting in uh, quite often over time in, uh, in uh, pre-diabetes, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, so metabolic syndrome. What we need to realize is even if you have a healthy weight, most of us have imbalanced cortisol over time. And uh, if you want to be happy, and uh, you need you need to fix that. That's that's uh, a message to uh, pretty much everybody out there. All right. Now you just said something really important. If you want to be happy, you have to fix your cortisol. Tell tell me more about that. Because when you uh, let me give you one example. Um, let's say it's now the what is it second third week of, of January. Uh, some uh, not some probably millions of people are still uh, on some some kind of diet that they started with with all goodwill, and they um, put them their body and their mind under a lot of stress. Well, guess what? Your cortisol goes up, and if you are in, and we'll get to that this interaction between insulin and cortisol, what happens is 
all that free quarter, that cortisol that is stored in your tummy will free up and, and freak you out while you're fasting. You might, you might be fasting, right? And not all diets are about fasting, but let's say you're fasting. Uh, I'm just making this up, but uh, 12, 16, 18 hours a day. During that period, your blood sugar drops. Guess what? Cortisol makes up for that. So it will release uh, the uh, cortisol stored in your tummy as uh, uh, through the liver will release it as glucose into your bloodstream. That's uh, how your uh, body keeps functioning because it's addicted to, uh, to, uh, to sugar and it can't get it during those fasting periods. You then uh, will, uh, because it's not, cortisol is not just about the putting glucose into your bloodstream, it's also about stress. So you get super stressed. You will not feel happy. And uh, this is one of the side effects of, of diets. It's not just um, uh, that you're depriving yourself. And I, I don't even want to talk about um, uh, the, uh, car, uh, the uh, calories in, calories out. That's, been, that's uh, already been debunked. Uh, we know, for example, people that eat the right diet, they could eat 3,000 calories a day. Um, the body makes up for that, right? If it's the right type of calorie. The body makes up for that. Just to give the listeners one example, if they haven't heard about this one before, um, if you eat the right type of diet, even with 3,000 calories a day, your body could burn that by just increasing the core temperature. And you will not even notice. It will not even be stored as fat. Whereas if, if you have the wrong diet, and most of us know that that is about carbs, uh, and that gets uh, stored uh, with with the cortisol, uh, then you have this 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 issue that uh, not only uh, do you have a brain. Think about it like a peanut allergy. You 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 don't feed peanuts to to uh, folks with a peanut allergy. Well, guess what? Most uh, folks that are uh, severe overweight or, or obese uh, think about it like a peanut allergy. You you have you really have a carp a carp allergy, and instead of saying to these people, stop eating peanuts, uh, in this case, stop eating carbs, uh, we just feed these people carbs and, and keep, keep drinking alcohol, keep, drink, uh, keep uh, eating bread, and, and I can go on and on and on. So we really need to change that. Uh, and that's, that's from the insulin angle, right? The, the carbs spike the insulin uh, through the, uh, the, the glycemic index, index that some listeners might be familiar with. But then the flip side is, you need to uh, manage your cortisol levels. Uh, we've just talked about the fasting, but there's there's lots of other cases um, where you might be, uh, uh, you know, you might uh, have a, a conflict with your boss. You might be frustrated in traffic. You uh, and so forth. That that uh, cortisol spike, if that uh, lingers on, uh, it it's you can you can. Uh, you can fast, you can diet, you can do all you want with all the best, <laughs> the, the best intentions in the beginning of the year. You will not lose weight long term if your cortisol uh, is imbalanced. And that is a fact uh, that you can ask any physiology professor. It's impossible to lose fat long term if, you're on insulin, if your cortisol is imbalanced. All right, so with that fabulous information, let's take a break and listen to one of our commercial sponsors here at the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. And we'll be right back with more information from Viva Wakemans, author of Cortisol, the Master Hormone. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Vibo Wegemans, you just said something really important, which is you will not lose fat if your cortisol is out of balance. Can you share with us more about that and how do we know when our cortisol is in balance? Yeah, for sure. Um, the um, uh, it's uh, I mean we're working on a test uh, for cortisol uh, to validate whether it's imbalanced or not, and when when it's uh, 
imbalance, which is, you know, we estimate between 70 to 90% of adults um, have imbalanced cortisol, you identify uh, eight categories and your uh, regimen is basically based on one of those eight categories. And it could be, like we said, certain levels of elevation or where the, uh, the, the brain says, look, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's go low <laughs> and then not damage the, the body. Um, a bit more about the, uh, the interworkings of, uh, of cortisol and insulin. Uh, I would say the, uh, uh, we asked uh, uh, professors in this field, uh, we interviewed them for our book, and we asked them what are the most important uh, biomarkers for uh, weight and, uh, and obesity uh, for, for um, uh, insulin resistance. And they basically said uh, cortisol is up. It's not just insulin. Uh, cortisol is up there. It's really those two. And I'll, uh, I can illustrate a little bit what's what's going on. Um, the there is no hard data uh, that we uh, we asked uh, those those scientists, um, but most likely it's a small minority of people that are both insulin sensitive and have cortisol imbalance. So fully healthy bodies where their insulin goes up when they eat and it goes down and it stays down when their cortisol and they're freaked out um, and have, you know, anxieties, but it goes up and it goes down and that's perfectly healthy. That's a minority. Now, what happens is if you chronically elevated cortisol after a few months, you can totally eat healthy. Uh, you can, uh, it will probably affect your sleep, but when you have uh, elevated cortisol after a few months, what will happen is your insulin resistance will move up. What does that do? Um, it will uh, not be able to get rid of your, uh, your, uh, your glucose, as we discussed in, in, your, uh, in your blood. So it starts storing that, right? It can't, it can't burn them up. So that's when you start gaining weight. And insulin resistance, not always, right? We, we, we're familiar with skinny fat and, and folks that are, you know, have a BMI of 35 BMI is, you know, a terrible uh, marker, but um, we can go into that in a different discussion. But if, if you are um, morbidly obese, for example, and uh, in, in some, I would say most cases, uh, we, we didn't really find an, uh, uh, the right number, but it's very likely that you are uh, insulin resistant and you have elevated cortisol levels. Uh, so there is a clear correlation between um, obesity and uh, insulin resistance, as well as with uh, uh, the uh, elevated cortisol. Now, what happens when you come in from the other side where your cortisol is in balance, but you start, uh, you know, let's say having an unhealthy diet, but your cortisol originally is in balance then your elevated glucose causes fat storage because the insulin is knocking on these doors and these insulin receptors say, no, 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 you can't get in. So the, start, the, 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 the glucose uh, keeps circling around, causes fat storage. And as we described earlier, the fat storage causes cortisol to be stored as cortisone uh, with an enzyme called uh, 11-beta HSD2 and then releases it with 11-beta uh, HSD1, that is the, 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 the loop that you get stuck in. And that's what we call uh, a vicious circle in which both, both cortisol and insulin uh, need to be balanced. And it's really hard to get out of that when you have insulin resistance and elevated cortisol. So you cannot just, as we just discussed, if you only attack the insulin with, with an amazing diet, right? Exercise, everything you will not get out of that as we just discussed because your cortisol is imbalanced you will not lose weight long term vice versa um, if you only solve your cortisol by meditating and yoga and what have you you will not solve your insulin resistance so when you're in stuck in that vicious circle you need to attack both these imbalances at uh, simultaneously and uh, that is that is absolutely uh, crucial unfortunately most of the uh, so-called experts uh, are not familiar uh, with the biological processes and the enzyme I just uh, mentioned uh, of this, this uh, vicious circle. So you keep going around and around in this vicious circle because the dietitians uh, and nutritionists and God, God knows whatever uh, gym out there will tell you that uh, the, it's a huge blind spot, basically. That's what I'm saying. 
Yeah, I've had more clients who are obese nutritionists than I can even count. And since you're seeing, I believe you said 70 to 80 percent of adults have imbalanced cortisol, that's most adults, right? Yep, that's that's right. And but there's ways around this, right? So I'm 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 not gonna sound desperate. There is absolutely ways around it, but you have to know how to simultaneously attack the insulin as well as the cortisol. So yes, it's reversible. Right. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna get you to pronounce help me with pronunciation. What is Gerlin? G H E R L I N. Did I say that right? Gerlin? Grelin. Ghrelin. <laughs> Ghrelin is the hunger hormone. Yes. And it's the, it's the, uh, so it, uh, it goes up uh, when we uh, have more appetite and certain foods, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's both based, we've always thought ghrelin was based on uh, the type of food we eat. So we know protein is more uh, saturating us uh, uh, than, than uh, uh, carbs, right? Carbs, you, that's uh, uh, one of the reasons why you keep going back after, you know, 10 or 30 minutes. Um, ghrelin usually comes down after a good meal also when you eat a little bit slow, more slowly um but what we also realize now is that there's a signaling function between ghrelin in in both the, the stomach is where it's being produced there's a signaling function between the brain uh and uh, saliva uh so the uh, you might have heard about the pavlov effect that's uh, similarly when uh we we see that that there's food coming um, the saliva already starts uh, getting produced and we swallow that and that's already communicating with the ghrelin down in the stomach. So there's a lot happening. And then uh, with some uh, neurotransmitters, there's actually information um, and, and, uh, being exchanged with the brain. I'll give you another example. Very interesting study we, we discussed in the book as well is uh, a study uh, that is um, um, involving ghrelin by uh, Professor Crum, uh, Ali Crum at Stanford where she had group a eat a bucket of ice cream with a label that said this is the most delicious saturated full fat full carbs ice cream uh, group uh, group b this is the most keto friendly low fat low carb whatever uh, ice cream uh, label turned out she only changed the label the ice cream was the exact same now, what is amazing was she quantified the level of ghrelin and it turned out it was different. How on earth, you know, if you talk to any nutritionist, right? If, if you talk to any scientist until now, they would have said, oh no, it's, it's all based on what we eat. Well, guess, guess it's not because your brain is overriding and basically says with the bucket that has the label with the exact same ice cream, right? Your ghrelin in your stomach would shoot originally should respond in the same way it didn't they uh, basically said the most saturated ice cream was was lowering ghrelin and and as a result the hunger and and it wasn't the case with uh, with uh, the uh, group b so vivo legumens how does the cortisol affect the hunger hormone ghrelin yeah in a couple of ways um through uh the um, I would say the, uh, when you're low on, on blood sugar, you, uh, your ghrelin goes up and, uh, then, uh, I don't know, fully know the interaction between ghrelin and, uh, uh, and the, the biological interaction between ghrelin and cortisol. But what I do know is that ghrelin, uh, responds to the, the blood sugar, uh, and cortisol as well. So we we know that when uh when we're hungry which is when ghrelin gets released at that time as we just discussed your cortisol uh is being pushed into the bloodstream right to make up for that when you're when you're fasting now the interesting thing about fasting is when you fast for a longer period of time in a process well we we know a little bit about uh, ketosis but some of the listeners might have heard about if you push it a little bit further to um uh, what, we, what we call starvation ketosis, where it goes to about uh, three uh, millimol. Um, and that is uh, a process that kicks in uh, in full gear. It's called autophagy. 
Now, the interesting thing about that is your ghrelin hormone resets. So you're going, and, and this usually, if you've never done it before, after 72 hours of, uh, let's say, water fast, uh, after 72 hours, that you, your body goes into an autophagy process, starts eating itself, starts cleaning all these recycle bins, um, that, and uh, uh, it's a very healthy process for the mitochondria in every, every cell. Um, the, uh, that's, those are our, 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 uh, uh, our energy uh, sources in every cell, and, and they produce uh, a lot of garbage, and that garbage usually doesn't get cleaned up. So that's what autophagy is for. Now, when after 72 hours, your ghrelin disappears, so your, your hunger is gone, which is really interesting. But uh, the, uh, when uh, you're not eating, you're, you're burning fat, right? Your stored fat is now being burned. Um, interestingly, it, it should go down to base level, and this is how you reset your insulin receptors, for example. But uh, I'll give you one, uh, one interesting story about myself. I was like, after a couple of times of, of going into a long water fast, and um, I noticed that my, uh, my uh, blood sugar uh, was going up, and I'm like, I'm not eating. Um, what's going on here? And the answer is, uh, so I wasn't hungry anymore because my ghrelin went down. And I'm like, what's going on? How is it possible that my, uh, my blood sugar is going up? Uh, is there something wrong with my body? It turned out it was my, my cortisol. And it was my cortisol thought, hey, uh, you're stressed, uh, more stressed than you should be. And I'm pushing. I didn't have much fat. That I didn't. I didn't do the uh, the long fast for for uh, uh, you know imbalanced fat or anything. I did it to reset the uh, uh, these these processes that I just discussed in my body. Um, but the interesting uh, side effect was uh, you are too stressed. Um, and in this case, it wasn't uh, because uh, of uh, uh, the uh, low blood sugar. It was really because I was mentally uh, too stressed. And it kept it kept pushing up my uh, my blood sugar, even though I uh, did not have any any uh, uh, food in my uh, in my system. So great information. And with that, let's take a break and listen to one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio for the Natural Healing Show. And we'll be right back with Viva Wegemans, the author of Cortisol: The Master Hormone. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Debo Wegemans, why, in your professional opinion, do so many diets fail? Um, number one, because it's the, the wrong, uh, the wrong food mix. Um, number two, um, because they, uh, they do not focus on the amount of insulin peaks. Like my, my view, and, and this is what I've validated with the scientists that we interviewed is you really want to go to two or three insulin peaks max per day. That's it. No more snacking. If you're if you're an, um, a professional athlete, you know you could argue you can go to three or four times, right? And especially with your protein uh, after afterwards to uh, recover your your muscle uh, tissue damage. But that's that's really it. Um, so it's 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 type of food, it's the time of eating, and then maximize you know a maximum uh, two or three insulin spikes per day. That means that's in a certain time period that you're eating could be, you know, 50 minutes or half an hour, however long you want to sit down. You can eat pretty much, you know, your normal amount of calories, uh, even with dieting, there's nothing wrong in eating, eating 2000 calories. Uh, don't please do not go down to 1500 or a thousand, uh, eat your, eat your, you know, your, your regular metabolic, uh, baseline but then it's it's uh, the third element i would say is is uh, your uh, your cortisol understand that you need to balance it uh, because otherwise your dieting will go wrong so it's it's really those three elements so number one what are you eating 
and and most of it cut the processed food cut the cut the carbs we've had amazing success in reversing uh, full-blown uh, uh, diabetes too uh, with uh, maximum 20 to 120 grams of carbs a day uh, so, and and then the other one is um, uh, the uh, not just intermittent fasting but really uh, going down to two or three insulin spikes per day uh, you know, I've just talked about autophagy. If you want to know more, there was a Nobel Prize awarded to a professor uh, on autophagy in 2009. And the third one is, is uh, you know, understand what cortisol does to your body and that you need to balance it. And we're not talking just about uh, morbidly obese people. I'm talking to you folks that are working on Wall Street because it's been proven that if your cortisol is balanced, your results on the job will be better. And there's a scientific paper on that, by the way. Now, why is the hormonal effect of exercise more powerful than how many calories we burn through exercise? Because a lot of people think, oh, I've got to do this intense workout to burn more calories. There, isn't, there are very few studies that exercise have, they make us feel good, right? Your, 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 uh, your endorphins, your dopamine uh, kick, but there's very little evidence that exercise will uh, help us lose weight. Uh, are we burning? Sure. Yeah. If I go and run a marathon, I'll burn and I'll, I'll you know, might even burn uh, some fat. But the problem is you uh, will usually, uh, when you come home, you'll usually eat more <laughs> than, uh, than you just burned. Uh, so I'm not saying you shouldn't work out. Uh, I think we, we all should. And I'm, I'm totally in favor of, of, you know, doing your 10,000 steps and, and, and what have you. But let's, let's make it very clear. This is um, more about feeling good. And, and yes, there are interactions with other hormones that, that kick in when, when you exercise. Um, but when you want to lose weight, exercise um, could uh, and, and I think should be a part of it. But I would argue that it's only you know, maybe 10, 10% 10 of the, of the overall solution. Uh, the, the big one is, is nutrition with the three elements we just discussed. You know, what do you eat time of eating and, and cortisol and, uh, the, uh, let's not forget about sleep. Uh, cortisol, uh, decides your circadian rhythm. Uh, it's not just how many hours, but the quality, um, and uh, your, uh, how well you fall asleep at a certain uh, uh, point of point in time. We discussed last time that, you know, taking melatonin pills doesn't help if you don't fix your cortisol. Um, and um, uh, the, the other one is, is uh, uh, what we learned from uh, Professor Crum at Stanford is, is um, uh, your mindset. Embrace stress, embrace it in also in when you want to lose weight you will go you will have to go especially when you're in that vicious uh, that vicious uh, uh, circle that we discussed where you have elevated cortisol and and, in, and you're insulin resistant when you want to get out of that your mindset to embrace stress like i have to go through this and i will uh, release more stress in my system and you will have to push through that so that's a mindset like we just discussed with that bucket of ice cream you just have to get yourself through that to, uh, to get out of that uh, vicious circle. So what practical action steps can a person take to balance their cortisol level if they do want to lose weight or just be healthy? That we, we have these, these four uh, modalities that we mentioned in our book. So number one is the mindset. Um, I would uh, uh, recommend uh, uh, Professor Crumb's work uh, again. Uh, the, uh, the, the second one is, is sleep. When you have these, these uh, rhythms of waking up, you know, um, if you can push out your, if you can push out your coffee uh, by even, even uh, 30 or 60 minutes uh, might help if you have elevated cortisol levels. Uh, if they're too low, uh, you might want to take your coffee, uh, you know, just regularly. Uh, no, no uh, caffeine in the afternoon. Uh, you, uh, uh, start looking at these um, uh, nutrition elements we discussed. Very, very critical is is not so much the carbs in, carbs out. Uh, we we don't even even count calories. It's really about hey, let's 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 do two or three insulin uh, spikes. You don't want to do that with uh, athletes, as I said, or or women in menopause. 
right? You don't want to um, exert, especially in the beginning, you don't want to exert more stress on the, on the body. Uh, so, uh, you know, just go to your uh, three, let's say three uh, insulin spikes. So don't skip breakfast yet for those, I would say. But um, hey, um, breakfast uh, is, a, is a modern invention, mm -hmm. right? Did, do you really think uh, folks were storing uh, breakfast a thousand of years ago? Um, some might, but mo for most, it was uh, hunting and gathering, right? And the, uh, that means that you go out and, and you eat what you, uh, what you catch. And, and uh, the, uh, what we know is cortisol spikes in the morning. It's, it starts at 3 a.m. Let's say you wake up at 7, half an hour later. So cortisol is actually the reason why we wake up. It pushes glucose into the bloodstream. Glucose wakes us up. Then 30 minutes later, that's when we reach the peak of cortisol. And then it comes down and it should come down. And then that's not happening uh, uh, in the right way in, in many cases, but that's how it should work. Now, why is that? That's our natural breakfast. So there's, there's in many cases, and I, I, again, I would look at individuals before telling them to, uh, to skip breakfast. Um, but in many ways, um, it, it is totally fine to, uh, and I would even recommend it after I've looked at the individual data, it's totally fine to, to skip breakfast because of what we know about cortisol. So the action, the practical action steps a person can take to balance their cortisol level to lose weight or just be healthy includes embracing stress, having a healthy mindset, working on improving your sleep because cortisol will disrupt your sleep two or three insulin spikes a day. I'm going to translate for that for our audience. That would mean two or three meals per day, skipping meals. And, Correct. and no snacking, <laughs> no snacking. And uh, that would rule me out. Although I I'm the same size that I was when I was 28, but at 63, <laughs> but I snack all the time, but um, obviously I must be doing something else. Right. What about things like meditation and yoga? and yep. napping How absolutely is totally that? great and and the same with you know we talked about mindset with uh with professor crumb um you know there's uh we know yoga and and meditation have impact on the mindset uh exercise um let's not forget the whole category in our book which we call uh hormetic stress so you're actually inducing um uh similar to uh uh you know, what we call pre-oxidants in food. Um, so it's not an antioxidant, it's a pre-oxidant. It actually increases inflammation. And then uh, catechin, for example, the Japanese uh, uh, type of green tea is, is one of those. It's a pre-oxidant. It, it increases inflammation because it's, come down, it's, it's coming down uh, deeper later. Uh, same with, with uh, hormetic stress. You're actually inducing stress in the body, increasing cortisol higher, uh, but then it's going to drop... Uh, drop uh, uh, later. Think of uh, things like a cold shower, um, going for um, a sauna, um, those, to, those type of things. That's, that's, those are hormetic stressors. So absolutely, absolutely fine. Um, and um, yeah, exercise, nothing wrong with exercise. We'll be careful. You know, we look at individuals. We are also um, uh, helping uh, Olympic athletes with their training uh, schedules. So it's about periodization. It's about um, balancing their cortisol. It turns out cortisol is the, the best biomarker for uh, uh, athletic performance and recovery because it measures both the, uh, the inflammation in the muscle tissue as well as the uh, uh, mental stress. So think of uh, Simone Biles with the twisties in the Olympics. That was a cortisol story. Now, many people notice that it's relatively easy for them to lose weight when they're young, but becomes harder as they age. What role does cortisol play in making it harder to lose weight as we age? A um, couple of things. So it's the, uh, the sensitivity in our receptors goes down over time. Uh, and that goes for, for many uh, receptors, not just uh, insulin and, and cortisol. Uh, so over time, you see, uh, you see that's happening. Uh, the other one in, in the female body, obviously, uh, you have the, the monthly cycle, uh, which uh, is, is uh, um, changing uh, the whole makeup of the body and how you store fat in, in the various uh, parts of the cycle. And then uh, in menopause, 
a major major impact on the on the female body because of the 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 natural drop of uh, both uh, of all, all sex hormones right that are produced in the ovaries um but the what we need to realize is uh, even when uh, women are in their in their 70s and 80s the uh, estrogen and progesterone are still being produced in the adrenals what is important to know and this is not just for women this is even for male bodybuilders is that when your cortisol is elevated by definition because it's it's an inhibitor to sex hormones by definition your testosterone your estrogen your progesterone is is going to is going to suffer so practical steps for everyone listening let's take this step by step for somebody who's listening to this and it's like okay i've tried every diet i've had clients who come in and they said i've read every diet book on your shelf so uh, it, it, nutrition how should someone be eating so eating two or three meals a day you recommend correct and i think it's you need to um let, let's let's clearly separate two two issues here when you're balanced if you happen to have uh, uh insulin sensitivity and your cortisol is balanced you can eat whatever you want right you can exercise and do whatever you want let so so when you're back into that metastasis level then then you know do whatever you want we're not gonna uh, recommend you anything right you're super uh, in balance we're talking now about folks that say look i want to shed 20 pounds i want to do this i want to do that so until you reach that metastasis level of where your insulin and cortisol and as i said the cortisol is the missing link what 99.9 percent .9 of the uh, nutritionists and and uh you know e even even um i would say most endocrinologists understand this uh, because they have studied cortisol into much more depth than than other uh, specialisms uh, but most of the physicians and scientists that we meet do not even know of the existence of that that uh, enzyme i was talking about that stores the cortisol and makes that our tummy becomes uh, a cortisol producing gland so um, what needs to happen is really uh, focus on uh, attacking both your uh, uh, not just uh, your, your uh, insulin resistance with your diet, but also your, your cortisol. Uh, but it, it is, there's, there's some, something good to say about uh, keto, although uh, there's various definitions. That's why I'd rather, instead of saying keto or, or calling it something, I would rather say, you know, minimize your insulin peaks um, because a lot of keto diets don't care if you have 12 uh, insulin peaks a day. Um, so that's, that's much more critical and, um, yeah, I would say, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I would focus much more on the, um, instead of calorie counting, uh, focus on the amount of uh, uh, unprocessed carbs you're eating per day. So no processed carbs, number one. And then out of the unprocessed carbs, only eat 20, 20 to 120 grams a day if you want to restore your insulin uh, sensitivity. So for processed carbs, only 20 to 30 grams of processed? No, no, no processed carbs, sorry. No post, yeah. No post, zero. And, uh, uh, but unprocessed carbs, uh, 20 to 120 grams a day. And that's tough. Like, let's, let's face it. I'm, I'm, I'm basically advocating uh, pretty rigorous steps. Uh, the, uh, and this, this requires mindset. And that's why let's not forget about meditation, yoga, uh, this, this embracing uh, the stress, embracing the cortisol. If, if, you, if you don't have that mindset, you, you will not stick to this, this, uh, these, these recommendations. So between 20 and 120 grams of unprocessed carbs per day. That's correct. Yeah. And um, so uh, this is very similar to the approach of Dr. Diana Schwartzbein, who's written numbers of books about how to heal your metabolism. What Dr. Schwartzbein argues, however, she argues that if you have a damaged metabolism, you should limit your carbs to about 125 grams per, per day more if you're exercising, more if you're depressed, um, similar. And she argues that if you have less than 125 grams of carbs per day can actually damage your metabolism. So I definitely think it's a, a, about individual balance, right? And how big you are and so on. 
So, yeah, and that's why that's why we we're not advocating until we look at the individual case. We're not advocating for um, these these rigorous like uh, autophagy. I won't uh, recommend anybody without looking at uh, more data to say, hey, go on a seventy-two hour water fast um, or skipping breakfast. Uh, so those are uh, more. You know, we first need to look at what out of these eight cortisol categories that I just mentioned. We need to understand where you are before we can make these recommendations, and especially if you have other hormone uh, uh, imbalances. And then we talked about, uh, you know, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. So Viva Wegeman's company, Pardeen.com, is working on developing cortisol tests. And there are cortisol tests that people can access already. There's saliva tests that you can do. Um, and Viva Wegeman's company, Pardeem.com, is working on developing more up-to-date tests. You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter, so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Our guest today has been Viva Wegemans, author of Cortisol, the Master Hormone. You can find out more about Viva Wegemans and his wonderful work at his website, pardeen.com. And remember, when you actually want to lose weight, you have to look at balancing not only your food intake and your insulin levels, but also your stress hormone cortisol. And by balancing your stress hormones and your food intake, you can learn to heal yourself and heal your metabolism naturally. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Natural Healing Show. Keep it natural with the Natural Healing Show.